Morning, everybody. This is Thomas Terry welcoming you to another study in the Word. We're going to do our third session today on raising kids in troubled times. Raising kids in troubled times certainly are troubled times, but raising them in troubled times, God will give us grace to do that if we will stick to biblical principles. Um, and I talked about a few things in our last two sessions. The third session I'd like to talk about how to show your children who God is, who he really is. Uh, and it's vital to understand. It's vital to understand that every day you as a parent show your kids a picture who God is. They don't really get to see uh, anybody else. They see you pretty much. You know, parents are pictures of and should be pictures of who the Lord is. So I'm going to give you some good advice today about that and and things I've learned over the years and hopefully uh, it will be a blessing to you. First of all, though, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, a very good portion of scripture here. And uh, I'm going to read this to you out of the Amplified Bible because I really like the way it says it in the Amplified Bible. The King James verse 1 of Ephesians chapter 5, King James says, <coughs> Excuse me, a little water here. The King James Version says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. The Amplified says, Therefore be imitators of God, copy him, and follow his example as well beloved children intimate with their father. Now, this is the first key here. This is so important. We are to imitate God. Uh, the word that's used here, follow or imitate, is an interesting word. It's from the Greek word uh, that that really um, comes from the idea of mimicking or mime. You ever seen a mime? You ever been to San Francisco or a big city where maybe they have uh, street performers? And sometimes a mime, as an example, uh, the people will be doing a mind thing. That's what it means. One person does one thing and they follow him and do the exact same thing. That's what that's what we're to do with God. We are to mirror God. First Corinthians chapter 13. Let's go over there. I'm also going to read this to you out of the Amplified Bible because it talks about the love of God, which is all important in a child's life. They have to see the love of God. In First Corinthians chapter 13, if you, I'm going to uh, concentrate on Verse uh, verse 4, love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy and is not boastful or vainglorious. Does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude or unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it's not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the best of everyone. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails never fades out, becomes obsolete, or comes to an end. Wow. Those are the attributes of God. God is love. And those attributes are very powerful. When seen in you and me, our children will see what God's really like. And so I encourage all of you to study these things, meditate on these scriptures. But the third thing I want to read is Galatians chapter 5, real quick, and then we'll make some points for you. Galatians chapter 5, if you will, in your Bibles. And let's look down here at verse 22 through 25. Again, I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible for a reason today. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward, walking in line, our con conduct controlled by the Spirit. Let us not become vainglorious and self-conceited, competitive and ch challenging and provoking and irritating to one another, envying and being jealous over one another. Amen. All good advice there from the Word of God, I'll tell you. But we 
are going to have to mirror or imitate who God is to our children. I believe this. If you walk in love and you imitate that enough, that normally a child will never stray much from God. I think the problems come when they see strife. The problems come when they see people, you know, bashing doors, screaming and yelling, when they see a lot of conflict in the home, when they see Christians go to church on Sundays, but act like heathens at home on, on Mondays, you know, that type of thing really puts plants a seed deep down inside of people that's very hard for them to get over. And it's unfortunate. It doesn't have to be that way. Christians need to understand that uh, the highest calling they have after their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and Father God and the Holy Ghost is their uh, wife, spouse, and family. Uh, so many people in ministry, they're out here, they're preaching and teaching and running around and, and having wild Holy Ghost meetings and, and you know, running from this place to that place, pastoring churches. But the, the least of their time or energy goes into their children. That's way out of whack. Somebody like that is going to end up with problems and issues, especially later in life when their family is cut off from them and they're getting a little older. They, they have grandkids, but nobody wants to see them. That kind of thing is a very tragic thing and can be avoided. So the first thing you're going to have to do to do this is keep your word. Keep your word. Number one thing, God keeps his word. The Bible says all the promises of God are yes and amen. Well, all of our promises should be yes and amen. I see pa parents break this rule all the time. Sometimes a child will be acting up, you know, and just keep acting up and keep acting up. So the parent will say something like this. You do that one more time, and I'm going to give you a timeout or punish you or whatever you do, you know. And uh, so next time you do that, you know, they do it again. Then they'd say the same thing, but they never act on their word. If you do that kind of thing enough, a child is not going to be able, it's going to be very difficult for that child when they, when they go to church or come to Christ to really believe the word of God because they don't see you. You ought to, man, you ought to watch that. That's, that's an important thing. Be a person of your word. And here's something. We are all imperfect when we're parents. We're going to make mistakes. When we make mistakes, okay, in, in uh, raising our children, we need to sit them down, we need to be totally honest with them, and we need to let them know that we make mistakes and ask forgiveness, because we want them to know that God forgives us. He's a forgiving, good God. And the, second, the third thing then runs right off of that, always show them forgiveness. When you teach your children to come to you, and when they ask you to forgive them, it's a precious thing, by the way, you need to extend that forgiveness to them. Now, that does not mean that sometimes we don't have to inflict some punishment, but forgiveness is always, has. they have to know that they are forgiven by you. So I would suggest uh, that you do that. It's important. If you, uh, Here's another one. Don't talk or gossip about others in front of your children, especially your pastors or church people. Do not, do not gossip, do not share stories or, you know, put people down in front of your children. God will never do that. God doesn't do that with us. I mean, and so they don't need to see that. This is especially uh, important for those of you who are in ministry uh, uh, because your, your kids are going to see enough of people turning on you. You know, uh, it's very hard when you're a pastor's kid to see how many people turn on mom and dad or whatever, and all of a sudden, you know, they're saying evil things about them or something else. Children have to deal with that too, and it can be very hard. So you don't want to do that and make a habit of that at home. Amen. All right? Uh, so that's important. Never make discourage, uh, discouraging or bad remarks about leadership. That, that ties right into that. And the sixth thing is set an example of prayer and Bible study. Don't just make your kids have a Bible study or say a little prayer with them once in a while, or have a little devotion with them once in a while. Those things are all fine, by the way. But if they see you praying, if they see you in the Word on a consistent basis, means more than anything, they're going to follow that path. I know this. My daughter did that. I know they will. They will follow whatever they see. If they go to church on a consistent basis, that's going to become a habit in their life. And if the church is a good church, it's going to be fun and not boring. All right? 
A lot of people listening to me, some of you go to the churches to where your kids or your teenagers are going to grow up, and they're just not going to want to go there. Uh, Christianity should be, yes, challenging. We grow, but fun, too. And Christians should learn how to have fun. Some of you really need to hear this. I have a word for some of you. You need literally to tr chill out. So, you know, some parents, when they get saved, feel the Holy Ghost, they say, well, we need to get out of the world. So, you know, that means to them, right, no ball games, no football, no baseball, no basketball, no this, no that, nothing, nothing. And you don't want to get contaminated by the world. On and on and on it goes. Well, you know, you can push things too far and your children, you will provoke them to anger. And you don't want to do that because children need those outlets. Sports for me was a wonderful thing in my life. It really helped develop character, taught me how to get along with others to play with others, to they taught me teamship and working together with others and so on. So I think it's important. Those things are important as as uh, you, you don't want to discourage that. You want to encourage that, at least some of it, all right? Not not controlling your life with it, but some of it. Uh, don't compromise your morals. Here's a good one. You know, if they see you sitting in church, and the preacher preaching certain truths, and uh, then they, you go home, and uh, so I'd say, just say the sermon was on watching what we say and having uh, uh, pure words and not you know ha uh, having a bunch of junk come out of our mouths and cursing and everything else. But they see you cursing and using the F word. I tell you what, this, it it is extremely troubling to me. I'm 62 years young right now. Back when I was a kid, oh, people just didn't use language like that, especially in front of women or children. It just was not. And if it happened, man, everybody would be right on that individual. Well, I go to a, a restaurant today or something with my kids, and a lot of times you hear this F, the F, the bomb is dropped every time on TV, on uh, everywhere. And it's a sick, perverted, twisted, demonic thing. You've heard what I said. I have even seen quote-unquote preachers, not they can't be real, on YouTube, dropping the F-bomb, dropping, the, thinking it's trendy, thinking that they're, you know, they're being real, man, but they're not being real. They're being complete, total idiots. And to, and to do that kind of thing and say, you know, to, to try to reach out to people that have those problems is one of the most stupid, ignorant things I've ever heard in my entire life. People like that I doubt if they could really be a Christian, but I can't judge people's hearts. But, you know, out of our mouth, out of our innermost bean shell should flow rivers of good living water out of, out of our, the abundance of our, our heart. Uh, our mouth speaks. We should have an abundance of God's word and blessing and, and pro positive things to say instead of that junk. Too much, way too much in the movies, way too much in TV. I mean, every other thing. I don't understand that. I, I, you can tell I'm on a soapbox right now. I cannot understand why you have to make a movie, and all of it could be good, pretty good, you know, but every five minutes they got to say the F word. Why do we have to express ourselves like that in, you know, in the, you know, just in, in general all the time? What point does that make? You know, in music, what point does it make? It's just all it is, is the same thing over and over. It doesn't shock anybody anymore. You know, they take the Lord's name in vain and blaspheme all over the place. His name, they use Jesus' name in a, in a uh, you know, a, a cuss word. Well, those things, you know, you ever notice that? Nobody ever says, you know, uh, Muhammad, Dan, you know, <laughs> you know, they, you know what I'm talking about? It's always, it's always God or it's always Jesus. And there's reasons for that. It's that blasphemous spirit you got. You need to get delivered from that. Um, so don't compromise those things. I remember one time a, a man was talking about this. It affected his life very strongly because his dad was a person who at home behaved himself, never cursed. He was moral in a lot of ways. And his son looked up to him a lot and thought uh, when he saw, when he looked at his dad, he was like, you know, he was like it was like almost a, a superhero to him, and 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 looked up to him in every way. Well, one day he was, uh, it was late, and he heard a noise, and he wasn't sleeping. This little boy, and so he got up and he and he walked and he went out into the 
into the uh, uh, the room there, the family room where you enter in the house. And his dad had just got home, and his mom, and they were so drunk that they were having to carry his father into the house. And that had such a shocking uh, effect on this young man that he'd never been the same after that because it was it totally was was uh, uh, not like he pictured or had been raised to think his father was like. But the truth came out, and it was a shocking thing, and it did affect him. And those things do affect us. Talk about the Lord as as uh, he is, not as you want him to be. You know, never use terms to a child like, uh, you know, stop that activity, God sees you and he'll punish you for it, or, or the wrath of God will hit you, you know, he'll, he'll fry you. You know, Jesus doesn't love you when you do those things. You know, uh, terms like that are blasphemous. God loves all of us regardless of our stupidity. If that wasn't the case, even when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We need to portray God as a loving, kind God who forgives with mercy. And yes, there's other side of it we need to explain to our children that we will get punished if we don't serve God and there is a hell and things like that. But what in, in your daily life, make sure you uh, extend the goodness of God to your children because it, that's what they need. They need to know that God has a plan for them. They need to know that there's something special, that they're created in the image and likeness of God. There's only one of them. Those type of affirmations... Uh, that they have a great future, God has something planned for them, and that they can go to God over anything and with anything. That is important. As much as possible, answer their questions biblically. Don't be afraid to answer questions biblically. Let them begin to understand that when dad and mom, uh, when they're asked a question, they always go and make sure it's biblical, what they uh, express back to them. And if, they, if you don't know, uh, about that, then you study a little bit, and then you take them to do a little quick Bible study. You don't have to sit them down with a ruler, and you know, like the nun does, but just just use the word to show them the principle about why it's important they don't do something. Never say to them, just do it. Okay. Now I know some people think that that's okay, but I I found this. I th I found that if you say, listen, <clears throat> I want you to do this, but this is why. It's one of the greatest things you can ever learn when dealing with people. Most people don't rebel against it when they know why you have a certain policy at work. Why? And, and why, why when we don't do it, it'll affect in a negative way. But when we do do it, it'll affect in a positive way. That's how to answer children. Children need to know, hey, it's, it's, it's more than just why. You know, don't put your hand on the stove. But why? Because I said so. Okay. That all sounds good, but to a little child, it doesn't register the same way. But if you say to them, don't put your hand on the, on the stove, Johnny, because if you put your hand on the stove, it could burn you and hurt you worse. And it's so bad that you'll, net, you'll, you'll, you'll get a scar and it'll hurt. It's, it's hot. It'll burn you. And explain what, what that means and how dangerous it is so that he understands. Now, you don't have to breed fear into him, but... You let them know there are some things they shouldn't do and, and, and they shouldn't cross certain things. Amen. Uh, I, I mentioned this. Show them serving God is fun. Don't be overly strict. Um, go out and play with them. Have fun with them. If they're in baseball, play baseball with them if you can. Uh, you know, if, they, if, you, if they're learning to swim, go swimming with them. You know, become a friend to them. Sometimes they have, they have to understand the difference between dad and mom when they're being friends, and dad and mom when they're when they're dad and mom. But uh, you know, that doesn't mean you can't be their friend and and can't uh, uh, have that relationship with them and do things with them. Take them fishing, do do good fun things with them. Take them out for ice cream. Um, man, I tell you what, as a grandfather, that's really fun because you get to spoil them, you know, and then give them back. And, amen. And so anyway. Uh, make sure you don't provoke your children to anger. Don't yell at them all the time. Don't uh, cause them to do things and be overly strict without explaining to them why you're doing what you're doing and explain to them positive benefits. If you learn to take out the garbage in life, you'll learn about work. You'll learn about how to do things and you'll be much better off for it. Explain it to them. Uh, but above all, love them, love them, and love them. Okay? That means all these things. It's showing them that they're loved every day. There's, there's hugging them. It's giving them a little peck on the head. It's, it's letting them know 
that they're valuable, that you care about them. That needs to be over and over and over. You need to tell them. You can't just show them. You need to tell them that. It needs to come out of your mouth, but it also comes out in your actions. Again, I wanted to mention, don't never tell them. If you do that, God's going to get you. You know, uh, you know, pray with them. If they're having a trial in their life, if, if the bully picked on them at school, you be there, you pray for them, you love them, you show them what to do. Fourteenth thing is when you discipline, do it to make them get the point. Afterwards, go love on them, pray with them, and tenderly ask them if they understand why you chastise them. They need to know why. They don't need to look at you that you're just, if you do something wrong, you're going to get belted by this guy and there's no reason for it because in their mind, sometimes they don't understand. Okay, so you need to sit down and clarify it with them. Listen carefully to them when they're talking. Sometimes they may not understand what they did or they may, un they, they may not under understand the concept in that particular time about that. If they don't, take time to explain it to them. Spend quality time when they're talking about things. Always tell them why behavior is good and behavior is bad. If you do those things right there, I promise you, your life and your children will grow up with a healthy idea about what God is like, loving you, and in, in more obedience than you ever thought possible. So, it's very important. Now, right now, I'd like to take just a moment and pray with you over your, your if you're a new, uh, going to be a new family, if you're a new mama or daddy, if maybe you have children now, Father, I just pray for wisdom. You know, the, the Bible says, Lord, when we lack wisdom, let us ask of God and you'll give it to us. Wisdom is the ability to apply the word of God to our situation and give, give our new families, our new mamas or new daddies, or those that are daddies or mamas or grandparents, wisdom on how to deal with with each child the best that they can be. Another thing before I get off here, you also want to understand every child is different. Their personality is different, of course you know that, but you have to find out what they're interested in and really encourage them in that area. That's what the Bible says. When, when the Bible says in, in the, the book of Proverbs, people quote it all the time, bring up a child in the way that they should go and when they, you know, when they're old they won't depart from it. It, it's not, it, that's not a real great translation of that. What it really says, the essence of it is, find out what a child is good at and encourage them in that area. And when they get older, they'll find out where they really fit into that with those gifts. And they won't depart from the Lord or the things that, that they are really good at. That's important because sometimes we try to force, I see parents do it all the time, trying to force their kids into something they wanted to do but didn't or that what they think is right for them you know, you're going to be a politician or you're going to be a whatever. When the kid is not geared that way, maybe he wants to be something else. That's what he loves. Just do the best to make sure. In the long run, that doesn't matter near as much as, as having a relationship with them, watching them grow up in God, and watching them become good citizens. Well, that's all I have in this session. I want you to know that if you go over to faithalivefellowship.org, you can uh, uh, tap, uh, tap on the media button over there. We have free seminars. They're free. And there's going to be a lot more added downloads and things, many, many different things. It's like Bible school. And uh, if that's not enough, just jump over to our YouTube pages right off of there, Twitter pages, Facebook Live. I mean, we got Facebook, Facebook Live, this thing, that thing, Twitter, Twitter, Gitter, Google, you know, whatever there is going on. And it'll all be a blessing to you. And uh, if you need a prayer, please send a prayer request and consider becoming a partner with us. If these are a blessing to you all the time, you're feeding off of these all the time, you know, it's important to support those who are blessing you. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that those who are ministering to you spiritual things should receive of your carnal things. You should plant seeds to continue their ministry so they can reach more people. And certainly we'd like to do that. We're gearing up to do all kinds of stuff. We're going to get a, a television camera again because our cameras were burned up in a fire. We're going to begin to reach out in all kinds of ways, live streaming, Periscope at the same time, live streaming, Periscope, uh, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. So you'll be get, beginning to see these things and it'll be a blessing to you. Also share these. If they're, if they're a blessing to you, please share those. I really, really want all of you to know we care about you and love you. And remember this, feed your faith. 
starve your doubts to death. Until next time, God bless you. Faithalivefellowship.org. That's our website. Go over there for all your needs. Donation button there. Prayer needs. Send us your prayer needs. We will pray for you. That's faithalivefellowship.org. Till next time, God bless you. We love you.